In this video, I'm going to show you how to balance redox reactions for equations in neutral, acidic, and basic solutions. Here's the approach, five steps. First, separate the equation into separate oxidation and reduction half reactions. Then balance each half reaction using the following steps. Balance all elements except O and H. Balance oxygen by adding water. Then balance the hydrogens by adding hydrogen ions, H+. And we could do this because we are considering these redox reactions to occur in water. And in water, there is always a presence of H2O, obviously, and hydrogen ions. I'll remind you of equilibrium that you learned earlier in this course. Because of the equilibrium of water, we are free to add as many hydrogen ions or even hydroxide ions if necessary and water molecules. The next step, balance the charge by adding electrons. Third, multiply balanced half reactions so they equal the number of electrons that are consumed and produced. In other words, we want to have the same number of electrons coming from the oxidation half reaction to the reduction half reaction. Then add the two equations and cancel out as needed. If the solution is basic, then perform these additional steps. For every hydrogen ion that is added, add hydroxide to neutralize the hydrogen ions. And do this to both sides of the equation. Combine the H plus for the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide to form additional water. Let's balance this redox reaction under acidic conditions. We have an equation where permanganate reacts with cobalt to form manganese 2 plus and cobalt 2 plus. We will first determine the reduction in half reactions. We don't necessarily need to analyze the oxidation numbers of every atom to determine which substance has been oxidized and reduced. We could do this by inspection. Let's take a look at the Mn atom on the left side. It is bonded to four oxygens. The Mn atom on the right side is not bonded to any other atoms. It's pretty clear then that the manganese on the left is highly oxidized and the manganese on the right is not. So the reduction half reaction is the permanganate ion going to the manganese two plus ion. Therefore, the cobalt going to cobalt two plus must be the oxidation half reaction. You could verify that by looking at the oxidation state. Here we're neutral and here we're two plus. The only way that cobalt could go from a neutral state to a positive two is if it lost electrons. Then we proceed and balance each of the half reactions. First, let's work with the reduction half reaction. We see that there are four oxygens on the left and there are none on the right initially. So we're going to add four waters to the right side of this half reaction equation. Then we realize that there are no hydrogens on the left side of this equation. And there are eight hydrogens on the right as a consequence of adding the water. So then we're going to add eight hydrogen ions to the left of this equation. At this point, we have mass balance, or all of the atoms are balanced. Next, we need to balance the charge. The charge on the left side of this equation, as is, is positive seven. The charge on the right side of the equation is positive two. The way to balance this charge is to add five electrons to the left side of the equation. When we do that, positive eight and negative six equal positive two, which is the charge we have on the right side. And adding five electrons to the left side is consistent with the notion that this is the reduction half reaction. Next, let's balance the oxidation half reaction. This is pretty easy. We need to add electrons to the right side because this cobalt is or losing electrons. So to balance the charge, we simply add two electrons to the right side because now we have zero charge on the left and negative two and positive two make zero. The next step is to ensure that we have the same number of electrons in each half reaction. We see that the reduction half reaction has five electrons and the oxidation reaction has two electrons. In order to balance these electrons, we multiply the oxidation half reaction by five to make sure we have 10 electrons being transferred to the reduction half reaction. Then we see we need to multiply the reduction half reaction by two in order to increase the electron count to 10. So here are the half reactions after the multiplication of five and two. Then we proceed and add these two half reactions. We could add these two half reactions like adding simultaneous equations in algebra. Line up the arrows in this case for each equation and then see that we could cancel out the 10 electrons that are on either side of the arrow. I encourage you to verify 
that there is mass balance, in other words, all atoms are balanced, and there is also charge balance. The summation of the charge on the left side equals the summation of the charge on the right side. Here we are to balance this equation under acidic conditions. As far as reduction and oxidation half reactions, it should be pretty evident that the chromium has undergone reduction because on the left side of the equation, the chromium is associated or bonded with seven oxygens. On the right side, it is simply an ion. Therefore, the silver must have undergone oxidation. And that's pretty evident too, because the oxidation state of silver on the left side is zero, and it lost one electron for it to have an oxidation state of one on the right side, becoming an ion. Then we proceed and balance the reduction half reaction, and we add seven waters to the right side. In doing that, we've added 14 hydrogens to the right side, so we must add 14 hydrogens to the left side. So now there is mass balance. The oxidation half reaction is already balanced. Then we multiply the oxidation half reaction by six in order to balance the electron transfer between the two half reactions. Then we add the two half reactions to come up with our final balanced equation. Here we are asked to balance this reaction under basic conditions. We see that the bromine on the left side is in ionic form, bromide, and bromine on the right side is in elemental form, Br2. Therefore, it is evident that the bromide has undergone oxidation. So the oxidation half reaction is the bromide going to bromine. Therefore, the reduction half reaction is the SO3 2 minus becoming S2O3. And let's compare these two formulas with the sulfur. On the left side, one sulfur is bonded to three oxygens. On the right side, there are two sulfurs bonded to three oxygen. Therefore, the sulfur has undergone a reduction, meaning the amount of oxygen bonded to it has been reduced. Then we will balance the reduction half reaction. First, we're going to add three waters to the right side of the equation to balance out the oxygens. Then we need to add six hydrogens to the left side of the equation. And finally, we'll add four electrons to balance out the charge. The oxidation half reaction is pretty straightforward. We need a two in front of the bromide ion to balance out the bromines. And then we add two electrons to the right side to balance the charge. In order to balance the electron transfer between the two half reactions, we need to multiply the oxidation half reaction by two. Then we add the two balanced half reactions. The electrons cancel. And then because we are in basic conditions, we need to add six hydroxides to both sides. This will neutralize the six hydrogen ions on the left side of the equation. We need to do this because this is a redox reaction that occurs under basic conditions. That forms six additional waters on the left side and six hydroxides on the right side. Then our final step is to cancel out the three waters on the right side and three waters on the left side to simplify the equation. I encourage you to verify the final balanced equation with regard to mass balance and charge balance. Here is another example where we are to balance an equation under basic conditions. Don't let that manganese hydroxide or the hydroxide in that formula distract you from proceeding in a very methodical manner as we did for the other equations. So let's inspect the two formulas that have sulfur. We've seen these formulas in a previous equation. So it is evident that the sulfur has undergone reduction. Therefore, the manganese has undergone oxidation. Here's a way to analyze the and compare the manganese hydroxide to the manganese oxide formulas. This manganese hydroxide formula contains hydrogen. This manganese oxide on the right does not contain any hydrogen. The manganese is bonded only to oxygens. Another way of defining oxidation is the gain of oxygen and or the loss of hydrogen. So then we write the separate reduction and oxidation half reactions. And we balance the reduction half reaction by adding three waters on the right, six hydrogen ions on the left, then adding four electrons on the left side to balance the charge. For the oxidation half reaction, we need additional hydrogens on the right side of the equation. 
and then we need to add two electrons to the right side of the oxidation half reaction to balance the charge. Then we multiply the oxidation half reaction by two in order to balance the electron transfer. And then we will add the two balanced half reactions. Because we are in basic conditions, we need to neutralize the two hydrogen ions on the left side of the equation. To do that, we're going to add two hydroxides to both sides of the equation. That forms two waters on the left side and adds two hydroxides to the right. We could then simplify the amount of water in the overall equation by canceling out the two waters on the left, and which leaves one water on the right. 